ಅಮಾಂ ಈ ಭಗವತ್ ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಸದಾ ಶಿವತಮಾರಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಅರುಣ ಕರುಣಾತರಂಗಿತಾಕ್ಷೀ ಧೃತ ಪಾಶಾಂಕುಶಪುಷ್ಪಾಣಚಾಪಾಂ ಅಣಿಮಾಧ್ವಿರಾವೃತ ಮಯೂಖೈ ಅಹಮಿತ್ಯೇವ ವಿಭಾವೇ ಭವಾನೀ with the abundant blessings of our acharya swami ji we started this vidya <coughs> sahasram lecture series a few weeks ago and we went through the initial part describing devi's form describing shri puram etc etc and then we <coughs> came to the destruction of bhandasura the main theme of lalita sahasram the main purpose for which lalita devi appeared on the scene so we were on shloka number 25 yeah start panta mama kaltuma ha sampatyari samarudha sindhur vraj sevita ಅಶ್ವಾರೂಢ ದಿಷ್ಟಿತಾಶ್ವ ಕೋಟಿ ಕೋಟಿ ಭಿರಾವೃತ ಚಕ್ರರಾಜರಥಾರೂಢ ಸರ್ವಾಯುಧ ಪರಿಷ್ಕೃತ ಏಯ ಚಕ್ರರಥಾರೂಢ ಮಂತ್ರಿಣಿ ಪರಿಸೇವಿತ ಭಂಡಾಸುರ ವಧೋದ್ಯುಕ್ತ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಸೇನ ಸಮನ್ವಿತ ಆಲ್ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಸೇನ ದಿ ಆರ್ಮಿ ಆಫ್ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಎಮನೇಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಲಲಿತಾ ದೇವಿ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ಮಿ ವಾಸ್ ಕೀನ್ ಆನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಭಂಡಾಸುರ ನೌ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ವಾರಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ವಾರ್ ಸಂಪತ್ಕರಿ ಸಮಾರೂಢ ಸಿಂಧುರ ವ್ರಜ ಸೇವಿತ ಸಂಪತ್ಕರಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ದೇವಿ ಹೂ ಕೇಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಅಂಕುಶ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಡೋನಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇವಿ ಲಲಿತಾ ದೇವಿ ಸೊ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸಂಪತ್ಕರಿ ವಿ ಸಾ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ನೌ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಮಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಹೋರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಲಿಫೆಂಟ್ ಸಿಂಧುರ ವ್ರಜ ಸಿಂಧುರ ಮೀನ್ ಎಲಿಫೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇವಿ ಇಸ್ ಸರ್ವ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಹೋಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಲಿಫೆಂಟ್ ಕಮಾಂಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಸಂಪತ್ಕರಿ ನಾವು ಸಂಪತ್ಕರಿ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ ಎಲಿಫೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ರಣ ಕೋಲಾಹಲಂ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಪೈರಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ವಾರಿಯರ್ ರಣ ಕೋಲಾಹಲಂ ನಾವು ಆಸ್ ಯೂಶಲ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಹಿಡನ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ the lot of appropriate hidden meanings have been given for all these shlokas which are apparently related to the battle field the warfare but they refer to something more significant happening in our heart now here the sampatkari refers to the jnana jnana vritti the mode of jnana which is called sukha sampatkari this is a technical term which is being used in shakta literature sukha sampatkari is the mental mode of jnana now she is the witness of triputi jnana gnatr gneya this is a famous group of three which always occurs in any vedanta literature jnana is the process of learning something jnatr is the one who learns and gneyam is what is to be learned the subject of learning so these three are independent they are separate from each other in the case of normal jiva jnana is different from jnatr jnatr is different from gneya all the three are independent but in the case of a gnani once he has attained the advaita bhava the question doesn't arise of being of there being any difference so 
the triputi vanishes and he becomes merged with devi mentally so this witness the witness the see there still there is a witness when the merger takes place still there is a witness which is the atma and the atma is devi and the the process by which she acts as a witness is called sukha sampat kari because she is witnessing something which is blissful sukha sampat kari because the triputi is gone and the jiva has merged himself with devi's feet so that advaita bhava when it is when it arises devi becomes very happy so that happiness is indicated by the word sukha sampat kari that is what it means here sampat kari samarudh sindhura vrajase vita because the indriyas are all like elephant indriya vishaya are all like elephant and those have been overcome by this jnani indriya vishayas are no longer vishayas for him so he is over beyond all that so she is very happy devi is very happy that is the indirect hidden meaning now next is ashvarudh adhishthita ashva koti koti bhi amrita surrounded by crores and crores of horses the horse army is commanded by ashvarudha the name itself shows that she is on an ashva on a horse and ashvarudha devi came from pasha like sampatkari came from ankusha she came from pasha which we saw before and the horse which on which she which she is riding is called aparajitam like we had the elephant of sampatkari rana kolahalam aparajitam something which cannot be defeated anyone now ashvarudha the indirect meaning is ashvarudha is the manas and indriyas or the horses like indriyas are compared with elephants last time indriya vishayas are compared with elephants indriyas are compared with horses here which is a famous upanishadic comparison we have seen it before so surrounded by indriyas of horses controlled by manas this is the indirect meaning this is what durga saptashati also mentions indriyanam adhishthatri bhutanam sakhileshuya bhuteshu satatam tasmai yakye devye namo namaha indriyanam adhishthatri so she is the one who controls the indriyas not only for one person bhutanam ka akhileshuya and bhuteshu satatam tasyai vyapyai devye so she is pervading every living being everything in this universe there is nothing which is not pervaded by her and she is also controlling the indriyas so the one the indriyas which have been controlled by manas and devi becomes very happy because indriyas are horses which run amak so if somebody is able to control through her mind that is the great thing so she is happy that happiness is indicated by ashvarudha adhishthita ashva koti koti bhi avrata now having seen sampatkari having seen ashvarudha now she is describing devi's chariot devi herself chakra rajaratha rudha sarva yudha parishkrita that the chariot of devi lalita devi is called chakra raja obviously it means sri chakra chakra raja is nothing but sri chakra and it is decorated by all weapons sarva ayudha parishkrita it is full of different kinds of weapons ready for warfare now like we had the names of the presiding elephant presiding horse here we have the chariot itself has called has got a name ananda dhvajam now it has nine levels this chariot has been described in lalitopakshanam it has nine levels height of 10 yojanas and width of four yojanas so huge now what is the hidden meaning here naturally nine levels mean nine avaranas nine enclosures because the ratha itself represents shri chakra Sri Chakra has 
we know very well has got nine avaranas nava avarana nine enclosures and those enclosures they may the names of the avaranas themselves convey the meaning of what it represents each enclosure represents something and the name itself conveys its meaning trilokya mohanam sarvasha paripurakam sarva sankshobhanam sarva saubhagya dayakam sarva artha sadhakam sarva rakshakaram sarva rogaharam sarva siddhi pradam sarva ananda mayam naturally the final one is sarva ananda mayam having overcome all the obstacles having overcome all the obstacles including roga etc etc finally we reach the stage of sarva ananda mayam now what is meant by weapons in the chariot in the context of shri chakra the weapons or the means which we have been provided by devi in her compassion for attaining her feet the means for atma gnanam the means for atma gnanam is the various weapons now let us go to gaya chakra ratharudha mantrini parisevita now we saw sampatri we saw ashwarudha now we are going to see two more devis mantrini and varahi or dandaratha we have seen all all these four before when we were looking at the various adornments in her hands now mantrini is the prime prime minister she is the one who gives maximum advice consultation to devi now she is the most important person in this hierarchy now she is more important than sampatkari and ashwarudha and mantrini and dandaratha occupy parallel positions dandaratha is varahi is the army commander whereas mantrini is the minister gaya chakra rasarudha mantrini parisevita devi is served by mantrini devi who is seated in a chariot called gaya chakra gaya means something to be praised something famous something to be strong about that is gaya now this chariot has got seven level like we have nine level for the earlier chariot of devi now mantrini is raja shamala mantrini is raja shamala sangeeta shamala these are the various names given to mantrini so because she is the adhishthana devata for sangeeta for music and she comes from devi ikshukodanda that we saw earlier and uh, this chariot which has got seven levels uh, what is the hidden meaning here the hidden meaning is this chariot represents surya mandala devi chariot is sri chakra which is surrounded by these chariots this chariot is surya mandala and uh, because surya has got seven horses etc surya is associated with seven so, uh, there are seven uh, permanent residents in surya ratha etc so seven levels and she, uh, what is the meaning of mantrini parisevita the original meaning was devi is served by mantrini now here the hidden meaning is mantrini is served by yoginis there are lot of yoginis who are seated in the sri chakra now mantrini is served by those yoginis who are who are sri vidya upasakas it is not yoginis it is sri vidya upasakas so mantrini who is served by sri vidya who is served by the uh, sri chakra sri vidya upasakas or the ones devi is fond of so devi is represented by mantrini that is the meaning gay chakra sarudha so we are seeing sampatkari who is mounted on an elephant and who is commanding an army of elephants we are seeing ashwarudha who is mounted on a horse and crores of horses she is commanding the army and we are seeing devi herself lalita devi herself seated on you know chariot called chakra raja which is nothing but sri chakra lot of weapons lot of means of attaining atma gnana and 
he is surrounded by the chariot of Mantrini, whose chariot is called Gay Sakra, Sampatkari Samarudha, Sindhura Vrajase Vita, Ashwarudha Dhishtita Shwe, Koti Koti Bhiravrita, Sakra Raja Rasarudha, Sarva Yudha Parishkrita, Gay Sakra Rasarudha, Mantrini Parise Vita. Kiri chakra ratha roda, dandanatha purastrata, jwala malinika chipte, pagni prakara madhyaga. Bhanda zainyavadho chipte, shakti vikrama harshita, vitya parakrama tope, irikshana samutsuka. Next we see the chariot of dandanatha, the army commander, who is also called Varahi. Now, Kiri Chakra itself means the shape of Varaha. Kiri means Varaha. That, that uh, chariot itself is of the shape of Varaha. And uh, she is mounted on in the chariot. Kiri Chakra Rasa Auroda Dandanatha Puraskrita. She is served by Dandanatha. Now, this chariot has got five levels. And uh, she is in charge of all the army, the entire army. She is the army commander. And she is coming from Devi's Panchabana, the five arrows. That is why maybe the chariot also has got five levels. And the what is the hidden meaning of this? Hidden meaning is the chariot, Kiri Chakra. Kiri actually refers to, though it means Varaha, it also refers to the race, the light race. Now, the light race referred to, according to the commentators, Trishti, Siti, and Laya. The light race refers to these three major functions. And when you say Kiri Chakra Rasa Roda Dandanatha Puraska Puraskrita, now the hidden meaning is interpreted by splitting the word in a different manner. Last time it was Dandanatha Puraskrita, that means served by Dandanatha, Devi Dandanatha. Now this time it is. Dandanatha Apuraskrita. That is the that is what we said last time. Different meanings have been interpreted by splitting the words in a different manner. And even some of the names have been combined, some of the, some of the names have been split suitably according. That we will keep seeing as we go along. Dandanatha Apuraskrita. Dandanatha is Yama. Yama's weapon is Danda. Yama is known for Danda. So Dandanatha Apuraskrita. This jnani is never going to be subject to Yama's punishment. Dandanatha Apuraskrita. He will never face Yama. He will never face Yama. He is never subject to Yama's presence. So, who is not subject to Yama's presence? Kiri Chakra Rasaruda. One who is in the chariot, subject, which is having the light of. Krishti Siti Samhara race. That means what? A jnani who has seen through the Maya of Krishti Siti Samhara, that's why he's mounted the chariot of those rays. Now we cannot even approach those rays, we cannot even approach the chariot, whereas he has not only approached, he's he sitting in the chariot. So he is a jnani who has seen through the game of Maya. So he will never be subject to the Presence of Yamadharma Raja. Jala Mali Nikak Shipta Vanhi Prakara Madhyaka. Next, we are talking about other uh, devis for helping Lalita Devi in the battle. We have seen the prime army commander, minister, etc., etc. Now we are going to the next level. Jala Mali Nikak Shipta Vanhi Prakara Madhyaka. There is a devi called Jwala Malini. Now, we referred last time to 15 Nitya Devi refer, corresponding to the Tithi, Prathama to Pournami. Prathama to Pournami, 15 Tithis are actually represented by 15 Nitya Devi, Tithi Nitya Devi. Now, the 14th in that order is Jwala Malini. 
Now, this Jawala Malini, what she did was, she created a fort of fire around, that is what's called Vanni Prakara, a fort of fire around this army of Devi. That fort of fire was 100 yojanas wide and 30 yojanas height for protecting the army of Shaktis from the marauding army of Bhandasura, particularly during the night. Because night time, these Hasuras don't follow any rules of warfare, they will come and attack. So in order to protect uh, Shakti Sena, Dola Mahajani created a fire wall around this army. That fire wall, so big, 100 yodanas wide and 30 yodanas height. That is Vanhi Prakara, the fire wall. Now, Vanhi Prakara, Madhyaga is Lalita Devi, who is, in, who is, who is inside that. Fort. Now, in all our uh, traditional forts, we see a moat of water around the fort. Now, that moat is full of water, deep. The enemy, uh, enemy soldiers cannot easily cross that moat. Before they attempt to cross, the defending army will pounce upon them. So, similarly, uh, instead of moat of water, we have the fire wall here that is instituted by. Dwala Malini, as instructed by Lalita Devi. Now, what is the hidden meaning? Hidden meaning is, for a jnani, all karmas have been burnt by fire. Jnanagni daddha karmanam, says Bhagavad Gita. So, jnani whose karmas have been, affect, have been burnt by fire, who is not affected by the fire of samsara, which is surrounding him, who is not affected by the surrounding fire of samsara, whose earlier karmas have been burnt by that fire. So he is free from all karmas. He is free from the afflictions of the samsara. So this refers to that kind of jnani. Dala, madhini, kakshipta, vanhi, prakara, madhika is that kind of jnani. And Devi is in the form of that jnani. That is why it is madhika. This is one meaning. Another meaning is Dala, madhini, ka refers to Five Shakti triangles in Sri Chakra, we, in Saundara Lahiri lectures, we saw uh, in Sri Chakra there are five Shakti triangles and four Shiva triangles inside, right outside the Bindu, central Bindu. Now, these five Shakti triangles are referred by this Dwala Madhinika together with the Shiva triangles. Devi is the Bindu, is the center. Vanhi Prakara Madhyaka. This is another meaning because they are all like a fire, like, uh, like an avarana, which is a, like a fire. Dwala Madhini Kakshita. Next is Bhanda Sainya Vadhojyukta Shakti Vikramaharshita. The straight meaning is Devi becomes very happy, Harshita, by seeing the Vikrama, by seeing the valor of the Shakti Sena who are all very keen, Udyukta, on killing Bhandasainya. Bhandasainya Vada Udyukta. They are all very keen. So naturally, seeing the valor of the Sena, Devi becomes very happy. In fact, uh, Lalita Pachana describes the battle in detail, where there are many names mentioned of many Devis. Nakuli is, for example, one of the important Devis mentioned today. Nakuli does a lot of destruction of the enemy army. Now, the hidden meaning is, the army of Bhandasura refers to the evil modes of mind. The evil more mental modes, or if you go to a higher Vedantic level, it refers to Avidya, where we are in Dvaita Bhava, where we see Dvaita continuously, then that is the Bhandasura army. Now, all those Dvaita Bhavas have to be destroyed and we have to reach Advaita Bhava. So, when Advaita Bhava is reached by destroying all the Dvaita Bhavas, they will become very happy. That is the hidden meaning. Nitya Parakrama Atopa Nirikshana Samutsuka. Samutsuka, he, she is very eager, very happy to witness the increase, Atopa, the increase of the valor of the Nitya Devis. We saw no Nitya Devis, 15 Nitya Devis 
out of whom 14th was the Jwala Malini Devi. So all the 15 Devis are also engaged in the warfare. And when Devi sees, Lalita Devi sees the increasing valor, Parakrama Atopar. Now, there is a an occurrence, there is a reference for this, this occurrence in Lalita Atopar channel. During the war one night, the army commanders of Bhandasura's army surrounded the Chakraraja chariot of Devi. They came as close as uh, Chakraraja chariot of Devi. How they crossed this is Vanni Prakara, etc. is not known. They must have used special means. But they came very close to Chakraraja chariot. They surrounded them. It was Nitya Devi, all the 15, who fought valiantly and destroyed that army. So that is the reference here for saying Nirikshana Samutsuka. What is the hidden meaning? The hidden meaning is similar to what we saw before. The Shakta Vedanta says Atma Shakti, Atma Shakti is always continuously produced by Atma Jnana. Devi is the form of Atma Jnana seated in the heart and she is continuously producing Atma Shakti. Like we have the Nitya and other Devi surrounding her here. So these Atma Shakti, we should allow them to develop. Now, if we don't allow them to develop, by constantly engaging in external interest, then those shaktis die. This is what Vedanta says. Yoga Vasishtha, now the commentator quotes from Yoga Vasishtha, beautiful quotation. Sarvaya eva kala janto ho anabhyase na nashyati. Sarvaya eva kala ha nashyanti. Anabhyase na, by not utilizing them at the right time. These Atma Shaktis keep coming, even for the most evil person. There is Atma, there is Atma Jnana, there is Atma Shakti. It is equally present in all living beings. Tamam Sarveshu Bhuteshu Krishthantam Parameshwaram says Bhagavan in Gita. So it is there. But if you don't allow it to function, that is the problem. Iyam Jnana Kalat Vantaha Sakrijyata Tivardhate Iyam Jnana Kalatu Antaha. It is there inside, the Jnana Kala. The Atma Jnana, Prakriti Jata Api Vardhate. Even if you give a little promotion, even if you develop a little bit, even then it immediately grows. Prakriti Jata Api Vardhate. But Anabhyasena Nashati, by not doing anything, it dies. So this refers to that. So when Atma Shakti is developed, by the application of the jnani, by the mental application of the jnani, Devi becomes very happy. Nirikshana Samusthika. So that is the hidden meaning. <clears throat> so we have Dandanatha's chariot called Kiri Chakra. We have Jwala Malini creating a firewall around the entire army. And we have the Shakti Sena, who shows their valor in killing of Bandasura's army. And we have the army of Nitya Devi, who shows their special valor, particularly on one night, in killing Bandasura's army. And Devi becomes very happy. Kiri Chakra Ratha Rudha Danda Sena Tha Puraskrita Jala Malini Kakshipta Jala Malini Kakshipta Shripta means thrown about, scattered. That means she has created that firewall. Jala Malini Kakshipta Vanhe Prakara Madhyaga Bhandasainya Vadhod Jukta Shakti Vikrama Harshita Nitya Parakrama Topa Nirikshana Samutsuka Bandaputra Vadho Tukte, Bala Vikramanandita, Mantrinyamba Virachita, Vishanga Vadhatu Shita, Vishukra Prana Harane, Varagi Virianandita, Kameshwara Mukha Loka, Kalpita Sri Ganeshwara Bandaputra Vadha Udyukta, Bala Vikramanandita, Nandita, Devi becomes extremely happy. 
on seeing bala's valet bala devi is the daughter of lalita devi 9 years old 9 year old child now she goes to war though she was prevented by lalita devi and other mantrini and other dandanatha and other devis she was prevented from going to war but she insisted and she went she is the uh, one of the anga devatas of devi she is praised as an anga devata of lalita devi Though she was prevent, prevented, she proceeded to the battle. She fought and killed thirty sons of Bhandasura, Bhandaputra Vada Udyukta. Thirty sons of Bhandasura, she alone went and killed. So, when this happened, Mantrini and Dandanatha, who were watching, they became very happy. They came running and informed Lalita Devi, and Devi became very happy. That is what this suggests. Now, what is the hidden meaning? Similar to earlier hidden meaning, when the jnana, atma shakti, we give nourishment. Atma shakti, when we give nourishment, when atma jnana slowly rises in the sadhaka, then what happens? The destruction of jnana commences. Jnana means impurities, ahankara, etc. Now that uh, when this process starts. Devi becomes very happy. That's why it's called Bala because just the initial process, Vanda Putra Vada Udyukta. That is all the evil forces are getting destroyed by the rise of Atma Jnana forces in a gradual manner. Then she becomes very happy. This is the hidden meaning, similar to earlier hidden meaning. Mantra Nyamva Virachita Vishanga Vada Toshita. Now. Here we are talking about Vishanga. Next shloka we are talking about Vishukra. Now uh, Vishanga and Vishukra are uh, mentioned as brothers of Banasura, uh, Bandasura. Brothers of Bandasura. Actually, the Lalitopakhana states that Bandasura created both of them from his own arms. From the right arm he created Vishukra. From the left arm he created Vishanga. Now, when he named this, a very interesting observation made by the commentator here. When he named them as Vishukra and Vishanga, he named them for a particular reason. But it turned out to be otherwise. He thought Vishukra will be will even overcome Shukra, who is the Acharya of Asura, in glory. This Vishukra will. Excel even Shukra in glory. That is why he named Shukra. We named him Shukra. Similarly, Vishanga. Vishanga he named because he thought he will have the company of special great people, Vishesha Sangha. So Vishesha Sangha by having the uh, association with great people, he will become great. This is what he thought. But what happened was Vishanga became. Viruddha Sangha Vishanga. He got associated with evil people. And he became. Accentuate it's negative. So, so what happened was the negative. Shukra means the director Vishanga was at Oshita. Devi became very happy when Vishanga was killed at the hands of Mantrini Devi, Mantrini Baba Shamala Devi. Similarly, Vishukra Prana Harad Varahi Mirjanandita. We have seen before Mantrini and Varahi are the prime forces in the force of uh, Devi. So she was very happy, extremely happy on seeing the valor of Varahi who killed Vishukra. Vishukra Prana Harana Varahi Mirjanandita. Then Kameshwara Mukhaloka Kalpitashri Ganeshwara. Now, 
that is a very interesting turn in this story in this battle story of the battle actually the shloka is connected with the next shloka next shloka says maha ganesha nirbhinna vigra yantra praharshita it says that is there was on vigra yantra created by bandasura he is after all a mayavi you know so he can do many things so he created a vigra yantra and what that vigra yantra did was the actually it was created by vishukra at the instruction of bandasura vishukra created this vigra yantra and the vigra yantra he placed in the army of devi by placing it in the enemy forces what he did was all the shakti under the uh, under the command of devi they lost interest in the battle they came under the sway of the vigna yantra and they said no no why should we fight after all this fight has no meaning like we also develop sometimes this interest in a justified when you are doing justified we develop this interest isn't it? it happens to all of us in on many occasions like that it happened now that is the work of that vigna yantra installed by this fellow vishukra so then this was reported to lalita devi that all our army has lost interest in who will now go for the war there is nobody prepared to go and fight the war then she became worried then she thought this vigna yantra has to be destroyed only by mahaganapati so she created mahaganapati how she created mahaganapati that is what is mentioned here kameshwara mukha aloka kalpita shri ganeshwara just to be looking at the face of kameshwara she created mahaganapati just to be looking at the face of kameshwara mukha aloka now this is beautifully mentioned in lalitopakhyanam this, this is based on lalitopakhyanam so lalitopakhyanam has got two shlokas on this process of how mahaganapati came into being satastha lalita devi कामेश्वर मुखम प्रति दत्त दृष्टि समहसन अति व्यक्त रावली ललिता देवी लुक्ड एट कामेश्वरा एंड शी वाज लुकिंग विथ अ स्माइल ऑन हर फेस एंड द स्माइल वाज सो पावरफुल दैट ऑल हर टीथ वर विजिबल अति व्यक्त रावली तस्या स्मित प्रभा पुंजात कुंजरा प्रतिमान मुखे करक्रोड गलदान कश्चिदेव्यगृंभत तस्त प्रभा पुंजा फ्रॉम द ग्लोरी फ्रॉम द रेडियंस ऑफ द स्माइल ऑफ देवी फेस एन एलिफेंट फेस द देवा अपियर्ड कश्चिदेव इज नॉट सेंग हिज गण महागणपति इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पॉलिटिकल वे ऑफ सेंग सम देवा who had a elephant face kashchit devo kunjara krutiman mukhe karakroda galadana from the temples of the elephant face to the mahaganapati the aikhar was flowing down karakroda galadana kashchit devo vedrumbhata so that is how ganapati appeared actually if you see kanda purana how ganapati came ganapati's appearance has been the subject of many different stories in many puranas it's not a single version there are many versions so one of the versions is like this it is given in uh, kanda purana kanda purana talks about the appearance of mahaganapati kanda purana talks about the appearance of kanda now kanda if you take for example parameshwara developed six faces and parameshwara looked at parvati with all those six faces and out of those six faces six parts emanated that became kanda there is a story how it became kanda how it was carried by vayu and agni etc etc how it was carried to sharavana etc sharavana lake etc now that is how kanda came into being similarly kanda purana reports that parameshwara and parvati were going around a chitra mantapa in kailasa where there are a lot of paintings all paintings are mantras saptakoti mahamantraha all the seven crore mahamantras are 
shown in the form of painting. Now, the, 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 the foundation for all the Mahamantras is Om. So they came to the center of centerpiece of, that, uh, of those paintings. And both of them looked at the center Om Mantra, which was represented by an elephant in that painting. So out of that elephant came, when both of them looked at that uh, painting, out of that Om came Mahaganapati. This is how Mahaganapati's appearance has been described in Kantapura. Now here also, it is very similar to that. That is why I am referring to that. It is very similar that <clears throat> there, both of them were looking at that painting of Om. Here, Devi was looking at uh, Kameshwara. And from Devi's face, Mahaganapati appeared. So we have Bala's valor in killing 30 sons of Bandasura. Then Vishanga and Vishukra, who came from the arms of Bandasura. Vishanga was killed by Mantrini and Vishukra was killed by Varahi. And Vishukra, before, this, before he got killed, created this Vignayantra. And to counter that Vignayantra, Devi created Mahaganapati from her own face by looking at the face of Parameshwara. Bhandaputra vadho jutta bala vikramanandita mantrinyamba virechita vishanga vadhato shita vishakra prana harana varahi virjanandita kameshwara mukha loka kalpita shri ganeshwara. Mahaganesha Nidhvinna Vignayantra Pragarshita Bhanda Surendra Nirmukta Sastra Pratyastravashini Karanguli Nakhodpanna Narayana Dasha Prutihi Mahabhashupata Sragni Nirdhagdha Surasainika Mahaganesha Nidhvinna Vignayantra Pragarshita Harshita itself means Devi became happy. Praharshita, she became extremely happy when Mahaganesha went and broke that Vignayantra. He made that Vignayantra ineffective so that all the Shakti, all the army of Devi became enthused once again. They became enthused once again. They were very keen in continuing with the war. So Mahaganapati was the prime force behind this revival of interest in all the Shakti army. So naturally, Devi became very happy. Mahaganesha Nirbhinna Vijnayantra Praharshita Bhanda Surendra Nirmakta Shastra Pratyastravarshini. Now having seen all the supporting commanders, their carriers, their important events in the war, etc. So now we are moving to Lalita Devi herself. Now the war between, the battle between Lalita Devi and Bandasura. Bandasura Indra, because he is Asura Indra. After all, he is not an ordinary Asura. We have seen this prowess. That's why he is uh, described as Asura Indra. Banda Asura Indra. Nirmukta Shastra Pratyastra Varshini. Now Devi was showering. Varshini, they were showering pratyastra, that is counter weapon in response to shastra weapon unleashed by Nirmukta, unleashed by Bhandasura. So yeah, naturally he was unleashing a lot of shastra and Devi was also fighting the war by unleashing corresponding counter astra. Now shastra and Astra have got different meanings in warfare as defined in Samskrita. Shastra normally, there are exceptions, Shastra normally means something which you hold in your hand and fight like a sword and fight with your enemy. And Astra is something which you let out from your hand and it goes and destroys the army. This is the basic difference between the two. The one is held in the hand, the other one is let off and then it goes and destroys, like a missile. Now, also, 
generally these astras are not ordinary missiles they are also they are, they are generally governed by mantras the power comes from mantra not from any uh, physical feature of that astra the power comes from mantra so that is why astras are very much more powerful than shastras so now here shastras and astras both have been used by both parties though it is mentioned that uh, bandas were used to shastra and uh, devi used to pratyastra but actually both have used both now what is the hidden meaning the hidden meaning is as usual atma jnana is the pratyastra which you it is used by the sadhaka for destroying the various modes of avidya avidya comes in several forms that we all we all know we are all very familiar the various forms of maya if you think you have escaped one form of maya there are many other forms of maya which are there waiting to trap you so that, that is the bandasura andra bandasura and the nirmukta shastra they are all those shastras and you have to correspondingly use your atma shakti and devi becomes very happy when you do that this is the hidden meaning like we have seen before karanguli nakhotpanna narayana dashakriti this is a very interesting development in the battle what happened was when bandasura found that it is impossible to defeat devi then he created the similar thing happened in sura padma's war with sanga uh, it is described in great detail in kanda purana so here also this bandasura what he did, what he did was he created a host of asuras who were gone long ago like hiranyaksha like ravana like bali all the great asuras who have been killed long ago they were all recreated by the maya is all maya of bandasura same thing was done by sura padma he created all of them all lost today in the sixth day war which he waged with subramanya on the last day he created then all the five days of war became a waste because such a powerful army he put up suddenly all of a sudden all the extinct asuras came up his own extinct asuras plus like this hiranyaksha etc so similarly here it happened with bandasura then what bandasura did was he used an astra called sarvasura astra look at that because by using astra with the appropriate mantra only you can do all this maya so sarvasura astra he created all these asuras then actually devi thought it is better to create corresponding narayana avataras because it was narayana avataras who had destroyed these various asuras by taking various avataras he had destroyed them so he thought devi thought it is better to create all those so she created out of the 10 finger nails out of the 10 finger nails of her hands she created 10 avataras of narayana narayana dasha aakruti hi karanguli nakha utpanna from the finger nails of her hand she created narayana we have 10 avataras of narayana they went and killed correspondingly all those asuras now the hidden meaning here is very beautiful hidden meaning is says narayana nara is jeeva ayana is ishvara narayana is ishvara nara is jeeva both are combined in this actually it means ishvara who is the ayana of nara isn't it who is the uh, destination for nara that is what it means but here we split them as jeeva and ishvara and jeeva's states are five and ishvara's acts are five jeeva's states are jagrati swapna sushupti turiya and turiyatita up to turiya we have seen before the waking state the dreaming state the deep sleep state and a state of jnana beyond all the three it is samadhi state when you are in none of these three states but you are one with devi that is turiya the fourth state what is turiya tita now very beautifully it has been interpreted in vedanta turiya is fourth with reference to three when you say four it means there are already three present 
so there is still a, a reference to the three you have gone beyond the three and you are in the fourth so the same fourth state is described as a unique state forget about the three which is turiya atita which is beyond the four it is full of jnana so these are the various states of jiva represented by five number five similarly ishwara has got five panchakritya that we know before we have seen srishti sthiti samhara tirodhana anugraha now all these ten all these ten that is jiva states of five and ishwara acts of five are accomplished effortlessly by devi by use of her fingernail by use of her fingernail she accomplishes all the five acts of ishwara and five all the five states of jiva this is the hidden meaning very beautiful mahapashupatastragni nirdagdha asura sayanika the asura sayana the army of the army of bandasura was completely burnt nirdagdha completely burnt by the fire mahapashupata astra when devi unleashed mahapashupata astra by that very fire the entire army was burnt now pashupata astra we all have heard of arjuna got it from parameshwara this mahapashupata astra is one step higher than even that pashupata astra that is where the adjective maha comes and the hidden meaning as usual is avidya modes though they may be many like the asuras are all burnt in the fire of advaita jnana that is the hidden meaning so we have seen how mahaganapati made the vigna yantra ineffective he broke it and devi showered pratyastra in response to the shastra unleashed by bandasura and when bandasura created a host of great asuras who were extinct long ago by the power of his maya by using sarvasura astra then devi also created correspondingly 10 forms of narayana from the 10 finger nails and she not only that after that she unleashed mahapashupata astra and killed the entire sena the entire sena was killed only bandasura was left महागणेश निर्भिन्न विघ्न यंत्र प्रहर्षिता भंडासुरेन्द्र निर्मुक्त तत्र प्रत्यत्र वर्षिणी करांगुली नखोत्पन्न नारायण दशाकृति महापाशुपताग्नि निर्दग्धासुर सैनिका कामेश्वरास्त्र निर्दग्ध स भंडासुर शून्य का ब्रह्मोपेन्द्र महेन्द्रादि देव संस्तुत वैभव हर नेत्र संदग्ध काम संजीवन औषधि कामेश्वरास्त्र निर्दग्ध सभंडासुर शून्य का नौ ओनली भंडासुर वॉज लेफ्ट एंड दो दर्मी हेड बीन बर्न there were the paramilitary forces and other you know secondary forces that is what he says by sabanda asura shunyaka shunyaka is the shunyaka is the name of the city which had been created by bandasura for his capital shunyaka is the name of the city look at the name shunyaka so by using kameshwara astra that must have been more powerful even than महापाशुपतास्त्रा सो देवी अनलिस्ट कामेश्वरास्त्रा एंड द कामेश्वरास्त्रा वेंट एंड बर्नट हिम निर्दग्ध नॉट ओनली भंडासुरा द एंटायर सिटी शून्य का सिटी वॉज ऑल्सो बर्नट बाय देवी कामेश्वरास्त्रा इट इज वेरी ब्यूटिफुली डिस्क्राइब्ड इन सम श्लोका इन ललितोपाख्यान आई जस्ट रीड द श्लोका महासुर महासत्व भंडम चंड पराक्रम महाकामेश्वरास्त्रेण सहस्रादित्य वर्चस सहस्रादित्य वर्चस दिस महा दिस काम महाकामेश्वरास्त्र वाज हैविंग द रेडियंस ऑफ थाउजेंड सूर्य गतासुम अकरोत माता ललिता परमेश्वरी गतासुम अकरोत ललिता परमेश्वरी मेड हिम लाइफलेस बाय यूजिंग दिस अस्त्र सदस्र प्रहिते द्वालैहि 
Sonyakam Tasya Pattanam. His city, Sonyata, became empty. That is why that name became really true. That is what the, the poet says very beautifully. Tadasya Prahitaihi Jolaihi by the flames unleashed by that astra. Nirdagdha Mahi Sahata Salamatram Ashishyata. The entire city was burnt, only the, the, the earth part, the land part was there. Shunyatam Tatpuram Name, Shunyamahi Yatharthataha. So the name of Shunyaka became Yathartha, became truthful, he says beautifully. Now, what is the hidden meaning, the alternate meaning? Kameshwara is Kidagni. Kidagni Kundra Sambhota, we saw before. He is the Kidatma, the Atma Jnana. Upanishad says, Atmana Kamaya Sarvam Priyam Bhavati. Because we are attached to Atma and we see the same Atma in a person who, whom we like. So that person is liked by us. Not because of that person or not because of that object. Because same person becomes disagreeable to you on some other occasion. So there is not the person who becomes disagreeable or disagreeable. It is the Atma in that person who is agreeable to your Atma. That is what Upanishad says. That is the basic philosophy of uh, teaching us the unity of Atma. So why, why he is bringing it here is now like this Mahakameshwara Sura burnt the entire city, including Bandasura. Similarly, the Shadagni of Kameshwara, the Jnanagni, Jnanagni Dagda Karmanam, we say, isn't it? So that Jnanagni, which is associated with Parameshwara, Parameshwara is associated with Jnana. So that Agni burns completely all the Ajnana modes, completely. And Devatma attains Saija. When even, even when he holds the body, Jeevan Mukta, when he holds the body, he is a Jeevan Mukta, all his karmas are burnt. So similarly here, all the city was burnt, but the city was there, the land was there. So the body is there for the Jeevan Mukta, but it, it is shown yaka, it is empty, the body is empty of all the karmas. So he cannot, he is not going to accumulate any more karmas. This is a beautiful indirect meaning. Brahmo Upendra Mahendra Di Devasam Suta Vaibhava Brahma Upendra Mahendra Adi Deva Samsuta Vaibhava Devi's glory, once Bhandasura's killing happened, naturally the Devas are all very happy. We are seeing in Durga Saptashati also when Mahishasura is killed or Shumbha, Nishumbha are killed, immediately Devas burst into a song of prayer. Beautiful. So similarly, here also they burst into a song of prayer. Deva Samsuta Vaibhava. Devi's glory was praised by all the Devas, including Brahma, including Vishnu, including Devendra. Why Vishnu was called Upendra, we have seen before, because he appeared as younger brother of Devendra in Vamanavatara. We have seen it before. Because in response to Aditi Devi's prayer, Aditi and Kashyapa. In response to the prayer of Aditi Devi, uh, she prayed to Vishnu, and Vishnu agreed to be born as her son. And because he was born later than Devendra, Devendra was elder to him, so he was known as Upendra in that avatara. So, Brahma, Upendra, Mahendra. So, all these devatas have praised to Devi once Bandhasra Vadha was over. Now, this can be interpreted as all the Jeevan Muktas represented by Brahma, Upendra, Mahendra, etc. All the Jnanis, they realize their Atma Swarupa and they enjoy that bliss. They were Samskrita Vaibhava, I mean, not something external, but something internal. They are always associated, they are always immersed in the bliss of their own Atma. That is the glory of Deva Samskrita Vaibhava. That glory is, is the bliss, actually. That glory is the bliss in which they are immersed. This is the other meaning. Then we have Haranetra Gnisandagdha Tama Sanjeevana Ushadhihi. Now we all have seen the story of how Manmatha was burnt to ashes by Parameshwara's third eye when Manmatha went and tried 
to dispatch his flower arrows on Shiva when Shiva was immersed in Jnana Samadhi and he was teaching Jnana to Sanakadi Maharshi. At that time, because Manmasa was dispatched by Devas, because Devas wanted Shiva to marry Parvati and beget a son for killing Surapadma. That was the background. So Manmasa went and dispatched his flower arrow. Before he dispatched, he was burnt to ashes. Now, it was Devi who became the Sanjeevana Aushadhi, the herb of Sanjeevana, the herb which brought him back to life. So, Haranetra Agni Sandadha Kama, Kama is Manmasa, who was burnt by the Agni of Parameshwara Netra. He was brought back to life by Devi. Now, this, are, uh, this is enjoyed beautifully by the commentators. Pitra Nirbhat Sito Balaha Matreva Aswasyate Kila. The poet says that even in normal human life, we find that sometimes when the father taunts the son, the son is comforted by the mother. It is always the mother who comforts, uh, even though taunted by the father. Pitra Nirbhat Sito Balaha Matreva Aswasyate Kila. Now, there is another beautiful hidden meaning given. What is the hidden meaning? Devi is Guru. Devi is known as Guru Murti. One of the names of in Lalita Sasnam comes later on. Guru Murti. Now, Kive Rushte Guru Strata, Guru Rushte Nakashana. This is what Guru Gita says. Guru Gita, which is taught by Shiva to Parvati, describing the glory of Guru. There he says this, and this shloka is a very famous one. It occurs in other Puranas also, like Devi Bhagavatam, etc. Shive Rushte Guru Strata. When Parameshwara becomes angry, Guru can protect him. But when Guru becomes angry, nobody can protect him. Guru Rushte Nakashana. Similarly, here, when Shiva became angry, Devi, the Guru, protected him. That is the indirect meaning. Now, there is a deeper meaning. When Avidya is burnt, Vidya Swarupini Devi is worshipped. By worshipping Vidya Swarupini Devi, only Avidya is burnt. When Jiva gets into that state, he still holds that body. He still holds his body. But the body has lost its normal, mundane interest. Similarly, uh, Manmatha was given his body, though he was burnt to ashes, though his avidya was burnt to ashes, not his avidya, for a sadhaka. For a sadhaka, when avidya was bur is burnt to ashes, even though you may hold your body, but body is gone. Initially, body was burnt, then it was restored. Similarly, oh, the body is as good as gone for him, and it is finally gone when he leaves the body, when he unites with Brahman. This is the indirect meaning. Uh, we will take the next part in the next uh, session, Srimad Vadbhava Koteka, because it goes into a different subject altogether. So, this is a part of the next uh, group of sloka. So, we uh, stop here today. Kameshwarasra Nirdadha Sabhandasura Smunyaka. So, by unleashing Kameshwarasra, Bhandasura, and his Patana, was burnt and Devi was praised by Brahma, Upendra and Mahendra and it was Devi who brought Manmatha to life after he was reduced to ashes. This is how these three parts of the shlokas we have concluded today. Now, are there any questions? If anybody has any questions, please unmute yourself and ask questions. Uh, Shri Guru Bhyan Mahaswami, uh, my name is Anvesh. Uh, you mentioned uh, um, uh, Ganapati uh, destroyed Maha Ganapati destroyed the the Vigna Yantra. So, in, so I, this is the first question I have. So, in, uh, in Sri Yantra, uh, does Maha Ganapati uh, pr is present somewhere? And the second uh, question I have is: You beautifully explained us uh, uh, the meaning of uh, the hidden meaning of Narayana, Yana, and uh, Narayana. 
if you can enlighten us with that, that will be graceful. Shri Guru. How about the first question? Uh, I can't remember now whether Mahaganapati is present. I'm sure he is present. Where he is present? In which uh, part? Because in case of uh, uh, Sripura, in the description of Sripura, Mahaganapati's name is mentioned. So here also Sri Chakra also, it must be there. I can't remember where. Now, uh, second question is uh, Nara and Ayana, the Jiva and the Ishwara. Nara and Ayana. Now, what we said was both functions, the functions of Nara, the functions of Ishwara are performed by Devi only. Nara is not independent of Devi. Ishwara is also not independent of Devi. Both functions, both all the functions of both of them are performed. Uh, in that context, Nara's five fun Jiva's five functions were mentioned, and Ishwara's five functions were mentioned. Five states of Jiva and five functions of uh, Ishwara. Now, all those are uh, performed effortlessly by Devi just by using her fingernails. This is the beautiful poetic way of saying. Any other Any questions? Further questions? Uh, hello. Namaskar. Okay. Shall I continue? Yes. Please go ahead, Shivali. Hello. Uh, Namaskar, Anguruji. Um, we generally perform pujas. Uh, in my puja room, I have a Lalita Devi photo where I can see on the left hand side, Lakshmi will be there, and the right hand side, Saraswati will be there. But when I go through the Lalita Sahasranamam, I'll be understanding in such a way that Syamala and Varahi will be there to the right hand side and left hand side of Lalita Amma. Can you please make me understand what is this? Am I understanding in the wrong way? Or? No, what you say is correct. Syamala and Varahi, that's what we saw just now. Mantrini and Dandanatha. They are the prime, they, from which uh, parts of, uh, from which uh, hands they come uh, were also mentioned. So that is correct. Now to say that uh, Lakshmi and Saraswati are forming the hands, the right and left hands of Devi is uh, a way of saying that all Shaktis emanate from her. It is not as described in Lalita Sahasrama. It is not as described in Lalita Upadhyana. But there is nothing wrong with that. Because Lalita, uh, Lakshmi and Saraswati are also emanations of the same one Devi form, which is Lalita. So normally, Sachabara, Ramavani, Sabvidakshana, Sevita, we are going to see later on. Lakshmi and Saraswati are operating the Tamaras from both sides, right and left. So if they can uh, operate Tamaras, and even in Kamakshi Sanadhi in Kanchipuram, we always see Kamakshi, Utsava Kamakshi, on either side, you have Lakshmi and Saraswati. So, nothing wrong with that. So, we close for the day. We meet again next Saturday at 7 p.m. EST as usual. Nama Parvati Pataye Har Har Mahadeva Sarvatra Govinda Nama Sankirtanam Govinda Govinda Sri Javadambika Jayajaya Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mommy.